Thank you. Uh, I'm really glad to be here because I think safety is a very, very important subject. And uh, safety is also very high on the agenda in, in Skanska, which I represent. Uh, so I represent Skanska Reality. Uh, I came to Czech Republic two and a half years ago, and I'm from Sweden. So when you're speaking about Nordic countries, I, I uh, have some experience. <laughs> Uh, in Skanska we have uh, defined or we have identified our core values and uh, we have, we call them the five zeros and one of those are zero accidents or even zero damages or injuries and uh, this, is, this is in whole Skanska very very important so in every country if you go to Peru or to UK or to Czech Republic or Sweden uh, safety is always on top of the, when we have meetings, the first bullet is always safety. And if I, if I uh, can uh, reply to what uh, Mrs. Uh, Benshova uh, yeah, uh, said, that all, in, all accidents are preventable, I agree with that. For instance, how many of you know where the fire exit is in this, where we are sitting right now? Without checking. I mean, that is one small thing you can use. You should always have this in mind. And if you are prepared, the possibility to treat or, or to, to be in, avoid an accident is much higher. The fire exit is in that direction. Uh, <clears throat> so, what we are working with, we have been very focused on the construction sites in general, because that uh, in the construction sites we have uh, lots of hazards. Uh, so that is natural, but also on the construction site when we have uh, an accident or when we have something that could have been an accident, what we call a near miss, we make a small investigation what happens, why did it happen and how can we avoid it for the future. And we're trying to learn all the time, but this is not easy, this takes time and it is a long process and everyone has to be very deep involved in this, otherwise it really doesn't work. We are also working with safety visits because safety is it's a lot about equipment but it's much more about knowledge and behavior and as a manager in Skanska you have to, to put efforts into safety that means that everyone in Skanska has to take the, the leadership in, in safety. When you see something on site which is a hazard or could turn out to be an accident you have to stop the work or you have to inform the, the site manager you have to do something about it. You cannot just accept it as it is. And to, to show the, the safety leadership and also to be involved, uh, I'm doing uh, about at least 10 site visits every year, just monitoring the safety on the construction site. And that is one way to, to improve the knowledge and to show that this is on top of the agenda. Um, and what we heard today is that a lot of injuries is also not only on site, of course, but when people move in and in, in people's homes. So that's why it's important for us also to focus on safety in, in our homes. Uh, Ten years ago, we started something we call Safety Week. Uh, and that means that during one week, we are very focused, even more focused on safety and we involve all our employees, it's about 55,000, and all subcontractors, about 150,000. And it's the same week for Hoskanska, for and that was last week. Uh, and what we do during these weeks, we are gathering all the people, we are discussing safety from different aspects, what we can do to increase the, the safety environment. And 10 years ago, it was a lot of discussion about equipment, about safety equipment, how to use it, what to use, and so on. Some years ago, it was more discussions about the procedures and the systems that we have all the papers in, in, in line and so on. Nowadays, it's much more discussion, discussions about the safety lead, leadership and behavior. Because as we said, all accidents can be prevented and with the right mindset, the right behavior, we, we can avoid accidents. <coughs> uh, and this year in Skanska Reality, 
We uh, invited our employees for site visits. So we had two sites which were kind of open for, for the employees to go there to see how we're working to, to discuss safety. We also had a presentation from uh, Mr. Blanca, if you see good, for our employees. And we had a first aid uh, course with Mrs. We thought. <laughs> Which was very good because people are very interested in, in, in first aid and safety things. So we, we got some knowledge about how to treat uh, if you burn yourself, if you have a wound on your arm, and how to, how to prepare everything. So that was very good. And we also uh, invited students from uh, Czech University in Prague. Uh, and uh, we took them to the site, we went through them on the site and discussed safety and they were, they were very interested and really impressed about all the all the hazards you have on, on the site and how to avoid the accidents. So it was a good good cooperation. <coughs> all right, do it like this. <coughs> Oops. Uh, and worldwide, I said we're working with safety, and this year it was. For the construction part, we are in the development part, but for the construction start, it was focused on to lift the safety work for the whole industry. So we invited our competitors, uh, and in Sweden, for instance, we invited the major, the major competitors from the big companies to visit our sites and to go with us to discuss safety. We are using the same subcontractors, all, all of us. I mean, it's an it's a, it's a industry where we have good cooperation. So we invited the competitors to discuss safety. It was a similar setup in Finland where we also invited the, the Industry Federation, the Association for the Construction Companies, and US, uh, Poland, and so on. Uh, and uh, if we continue with this, uh, as I said, most of our focus has been on, on the construction site so far and what we do on the construction site is that we first of all we train all our employees and subcontractors and that is crucial to have the knowledge and to have this on, on the mind and before you enter the site you have to have a, a short training where we present what are the hazards today uh, avoid going under a hanging load or you should not go under hand hang load and so on and to enter the site you need this training and then you are registered and then we have like a face scanner to identify you. So if you are in the system, you are recognized by, your, by this face scanner. So you cannot really enter the, the site without this. Yeah. We also prepare the construction site with the ways for or routes for pedestrians. We want to, people not to walk in the same area where you have the, the heavy machines, for instance, because that is a, a quite common uh, way of having accidents. This is uh, something that we have introduced just recently. It is a system where he is hooked up in his, uh, I don't know what you call it, harness, harness. <laughs> uh, at the back. So this guy can walk and this is like a, a safety belt in the car. So he can, he can move around here, but if he falls down, this will immediately stop him. And this is uh, a big circle where it can move. And this is only one equipment which is very functional and that is introduced now. Before it was always a problem when you are putting the formwork on these uh, beams because you don't really can, can cover the, the formwork <coughs> in a good way. So this is uh, something we have introduced just recently. And another tool that we are using, we call it tall toolbox meetings. It's uh, every week we gather the, the people on, on site and we discuss the, the behavior, what, what is okay to do, what is not okay to do. And also to help each other because someone is doing something wrong and it's the other's responsibility to inform and stop. <coughs> and now I will try to widen the view a little bit. Uh, maybe you know this, it's uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I haven't studied so so sociology that much, 
so I don't know so much about it. But what this says is that it's the basic needs from the, from the bottom, and this is uh, physiological needs. You have to eat, you have to sleep, you have to have shelters, etc., to feel good. The next is safety, and over that is social needs. You have to be loved, you need to, to meet other people, and so on and it continue up. And if you reach this, <coughs> we discussed it the other day, what happens if you are on top? And Andre said, then you need to have your middle age crisis and buy the young Porsche. <laughs> but the point is that to feel good, you need to, to follow those needs or fulfill the needs. And safety is one of the really basic needs. And this consists of Personal security, of course, you have to feel secure. Financial security, if you have financial problems all the time, you don't feel that good. Uh, health and well-being, and also safety net against accidents and illness. And <clears throat> so what we can see is that safety is very important for your well-being in the end. And for us, we are following our customers for a very long time. First, we meet them when we, when we want to sell the apartment and they have a need of, of a new home. And then we follow through in China, client changes when they want to, to have another floor or whatever it is. And through the occupancy when they enter the apartment and then we have the warranty period. But many of our customers are also coming back to us when, when <coughs> something happened in their life. Maybe they get married, they, they have children, they are divorced, their children move out or whatever, and then they need a new apartment. So then they come back, which means that our customers' needs is very important for us as well, because if we can find a solution for them, we are very attractive for them. So that's another important issue for us to focus on. Uh, this is from a month ago, uh, we were participating in trade fair Budlini in Lettonia, and it was a cooperation with IKEA. So we had a monitor with the, with the basic purpose to, to show our apartments, of course. But at the same time, we had some uh, courses or, or information about first aid. And it was very appreciated. So this guy, he had, he had a piece of glass in his arm like this. And the kids were so thrilled. Wow, he's dying. <laughs> and, uh, and she showed how to, how to treat this and asked questions. Should you take it away or should you just put some bandage around it or whatever? And also, how, how do you treat people who are not breathing anymore? And, and this shows that people do really care about first aid. It's very top on the agenda for, for everyone. So this was one way for us to, to start to introduce this and to, to uh, improve the apartments as well, to start this dialogue. And uh, at the same time, in, in cooperation with IKEA, we have created like a start kit, which we hand over as a present when people move in. And uh, it's not only items for, for preventing accidents, it's also if the accident happens, how to, how to do. But I think even most important is, is this small brochure with the knowledge. What can happen at home? How should you treat it? How can you avoid the, the accidents that happen? So I think this is one kind of, of way for us to increase the, the safety at home. <clears throat> Uh, and uh, I mean, it starts, the, the safety thinking starts really from the first in the process, in the planning process of the new home, and then through the design phases and also into execution on site, and when you even move in, the safety when you're using the home, and for the people maintaining the building, I mean, they, they, it has to be people on the roof from time to time to, to solve things. So we have to take all that into consideration. And uh, Nadia will show you some, some examples where we have used the, the safety, what, what kind of items we implement. And this is uh, the last, the latest phase in the project where we hand over this safety kit from, from IKEA. So, please. <coughs> Ja, 
pánové, jak už Mikael říkal, tak ta cesta, kdy v podstatě koupíme pozemek a začneme malovat nějakou první studii, až k tomu, kdy předáváme klientovi byt, relativně dlouhá. Takže my se snažíme nemyslet pouze na to, jakou zkušenost máme z minulosti, z těch samozřejmě čerpáme, ale snažíme se i sledovat ty trendy na trhu a snažíme se mít i nějakou vizi do budoucna, nejenom v oblasti třeba energií a jiných aspektů, ale i v oblasti právě bezpečnosti. Bezpečnostní řešení v našich bytových projektech se netýkají pouze jednotlivých bytových jednotek, ale týkají se samozřejmě i té obálky, to znamená celého toho objektu a jeho okolí. Tady je vizualizace v podstatě jednoho z našich vzorových bytů na projektu v Praze 5 na Vidouli. A pojďme k těm jednotlivým bezpečnostním řešením. Samozřejmě máme daná nějaká bezpečnostní řešení, která musíme ctít ze zákona. Ve všech bytových jednotkách máme standardní detektory kouře, máme čidla CO v garážích. Ale nesnažíme se pouze ctít zákon, snažíme se myslet i na to, jak už Mikael zmínil, že ten dům by měl někdo udržovat, má ho, musí ho někdo zpravovat, to znamená, musí v zimě například na střeše odklízet sníh, nebo instalujeme na mnoha projektech solární panely, to znamená, zprávce musí udržovat solární panely. Čili riziko pádu ze střechy je jedno z častých rizik. Proto se snažíme implementovat již do toho projektu speciální bezpečnostní prvky. Ať už bezpečnostní kotvy, kde se může ten člověk nějakým způsobem proti tomu pádu zajistit, nebo tady vidíte na té vizualizaci zábradlí, tak aby byl lépe chráněn a nemohlo k tomu pádu dojít. <těk> Další z bezpečnostních řešení, kterým se zabýváme, zejména například v přízemí našich bytových projektů, jsou pochopitelně bezpečnostní sklad, tak aby byl ochráněn ten člověk i proti nějakému vandalismu nebo krádežím, loupežím. Bezpečnostní kličky, aby děti nemohly například otevřít samé okna. Dále je to aretace, vlastně aretace oken, kdy se snažíme myslet na to, že to okno by mělo být zabezpečené. Jako dohořila paní doktorka, častým rizikem je pád, to znamená, aby nemohlo dojít k pádu z okna. Toto je náš projekt v Uhříněvsi, kde samozřejmě, tak jak jsem hovořila, že sledujeme i ty trendy do budoucna, tak jsme mysleli na auta poháně na, na plyn, to znamená nejenom LPG, které bylo v minulosti používáno, ale začíná se rozvíjet i technologie CNG. Škoda v letošním roce uvádí na trh vlastně nový model, který bude, bude používat CNG. Takže v tomto projektu jsme do části garáží implementovali pro uh, automobily poháněné uh, na plyn, speciální detektory plynu a samozřejmě jsou tam další bezpečnostní prvky, kdy tyto garážová, tato garážová stání jsou samostatné, <coughs> tak kdyby k něčemu došlo, aby to byl samostatný vlastně uh, okruh. Standardem se stává to, že uh, nejenom tedy myslíme na klienta v jeho bytové jednotce, ale i na společné prostory v tom objektu, Sklepy jsou zpravidla umístěny dole v garážích, čili ten člověk se pohybuje i v tom objektu v pozdějších hodinách nebo v brzkých ranních hodinách. Z toho důvodu se snažíme implementovat ať už čipové vstupy, nebo tady je ukázka vlastně z bezpečnostní okolů na dveřích a videotelefonu, kdy z té bytové jednotky máte možnost monitorovat, kdo, kdo se snaží do toho objektu dostat nebo kdo vám jde na návštěvu. Naši kolegové v studentském centru mají samozřejmě bohaté zkušenosti s tím, co klienti nejčastěji poptávají, pokud sami mají zájem si zvýšit bezpečnost té své bytové jednotky. Z toho důvodu jsme vlastně připravili tzv. klientské balíčky. Toto je balíček zaměřený na bezpečnost, kdy jsme z naší zkušenosti a z našich nějakých průzkumů a dotazů na klienty identifikovali nejčastěji poptávané bezpečnostní prvky které klienty zajímají a které, by byly, které jsou ochotní v podstatě implementovat do toho svého bytu. 
a vytvořili jsme předdefinovaný balíček, kdy klient hned na počátku zná jasnou cenu a ví, co ten balíček obsahuje a může si v podstatě do té své bytové jednotky požádat o tuto klientskou změnu. Ať už jsou to bezpečnostní skla, vyšší třída bezpečnostních stupní dveří, je to tedy domácí videotelefon, bezpečnostní chování a případně i elektronický zabezpečovací systém celé té jednotky. Tím, že jsme nadnárodní společnost, tak samozřejmě se snažíme využívat té synergie, že máme zkušenost našich kolegů na dosah a i inspiraci pro nás. Takže se snažíme napříč vlastně v rámci, v rámci celé skupiny si vyměňovat názory a zkušenosti. My jsme pro tuto prezentaci zvolili příklad ze Švédska, kdy například u nich ze zákona je rovněž dáno, že musí být kouřové čidlo v každé bytové jednotce, ale co nás třeba zaujalo, že všechny jejich bytové jednotky jsou připraveny i pro vozíčkáře. To znamená, pokud si vozíčkář kupuje byt, nemusí hledat specificky pro něj upravený byt v tom projektu, ale de facto ví, že každá ta bytová jednotka je uspůsobena tomu, aby se mohl bezpečně pohybovat, to znamená otočit se do 360 stupňů ve všech chodbách, v koupelnách, je na to myšleno již od prvou počátku. Dalším takovým zabezpečovacím prvkem, který, který používají kolegové ve Švédsku, je tedy klasický domácí zabezpečovací systém, v podstatě EPS naše známa, ale jsou to i tzv. chytrá tlačítka ústupních dveří, která myslí nejenom na bezpečnost, ale myslí i například na energie, na úsporu energii. Ve chvíli, kdy opouštíte tu jednotku na delší dobu, tak jedním tlačítkem vlastně eliminujete spotřebu elektrické energie v tom bytě a dostáváte se do takového, abych to nazvala, ten pár modu, kdy vlastně pouze nezbytné, nezbytné je minimalizována vlastně, minimalizována spotřeba té elektrické energie v jednotce. Tak, to je za mě všechno. <laughs>